I see you've got a uh, Hen and Hooker jersey hanging above you there in, in your uh, your little Reese's Senior Bowl studio, um, which is very nice, by the way. It's it's outshining our studio here. Um, what do you make of his stock seems to be soaring right now? I saw Lance Zerline um, had a, a mock draft that had him high, not maybe the most recent one. Somebody, Mike Tannenbaum, your buddy Steve, had a, a mock of him going five, five. to the yeah. Seahawks. Like his stock seems to be going through the roof. And we've talked before in this podcast about just the difficulty projecting play from that kind of offense, that kind of extreme college type of offense to the NFL where the asks are just so different, right? So it's not that we don't, it's not that we know definitively that he can't do X, Y, and Z. It's that it's, there's a huge question mark there relative to some of these other guys. So how do you project guys like that from that offense? And how important is things like, you know, the senior bowl experience where practice and the environment is different. You get to see them, you know, exposed to the sort of, to more X's and O's, to, to just different things. Yeah, I'll try not to be too long-winded on this one, but there's a lot to lot to <laughs> dig into with that with that question. I'll I'll say this for Hendon's sake, I hope he's rising, man. I really do. Um, he, he's an awesome young man. Uh, I had a chance to be around him a little bit last summer at the Manning camp. Then went up to Knoxville in August, and, and uh, Coach Heupel had me speak to the team and spend a little time there. And uh, we made an exception this year, man. Like we don't want to get in the habit of bringing injured players to the Senior Bowl. I don't think that's good for business at all. Uh, but Hendon to me was a special case. He was. He earned it. You know, he, he was kind of one of the faces of college football this year. He, he was playing great, would have been in New York for the Heisman had he not had the ACL. Um, and then the quarterback position itself, I just think, lends itself more to the interview process and in the in the meeting room time. I think he, I thought he really could have helped himself there. Um, so I hope he is. You know, you look back at last year and and man, there was, you know, everyone's got like mock draft you know, 47.0s by the time we get to the draft. But there was a you know, pretty notable um, – draft prognosticator last year that came out with his, his last possible mock draft had uh had malik willis going number two to the detroit lions and and you know going in the third round so we don't know we don't know i i hope for hendon um i will say this yeah it's it, it is a bit of a, a difficult projection from that offense and i'll carry that over even to like jalen hyatt um you know we're trying to circle the wagons here internally and watch some of these you know juniors that are being ranked really high he's a tough eval man i mean yeah. you, you don't get to see him do a lot of NFL carryover stuff. So um, to me, the benefit of Senior Bowl week and, and not specifically to Tennessee, but to a lot of these players is that they're asked to do something here that maybe they weren't asked to do in college. Right. So I think that, you know, the transfer portal has is, is been huge for the players, but there's almost a transfer portal system going on in co with the coaches right now. Like these 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 players are all getting recruited to go to a school. And then two years later, the coach is gone and a new guy comes in and the player probably doesn't even fit that system. So um, you know, a, a, an example I, I like to use is Jalen Petrie last year from Baylor, the safety. You know, when he was at Baylor, he was used as kind of a, a low, low overhang player. That's why he had 17 and a half tackles for loss or whatever he was. He's always, you know, darting in off the edge. And then he comes to Senior Bowl week and he's playing from depth. He's playing off the hash. You see him in man coverage. So it really helps clean up that, that evaluation. That's why I was I was really it would have been great for him to be healthy this year and go through the week at the Senior Bowl and, and run a more pro style system. Uh, but back to your original question, I don't know if he's rising or not. I hope he is. Um, I do think it makes sense for teams to trade up for a quarterback and get that fifth year. Uh, when I was with the Seahawks, we were on the clock and and uh, John Schneider made a trade with with the Vikings and they moved back in and took Teddy Bridgewater and, and we got out of the first round that year and to get that fifth year for Teddy. So. Um, uh, again, I hope it happens for Hendon. That'd be awesome. Yeah, a couple of the stats that we've used uh, to describe Hendon Hooker and Jalen Hyatt here. Uh, Hendon Hooker, because we track everything here, um, 15 times he's had to get to his second read. He actually started on one side of the field and then worked to the other side of the field. The offense simply doesn't – it doesn't mean he can't do it. This, the offense right. simply doesn't ask you to do it. And the offense does such a good job of creating the one-on-ones on the front side, you throw the one-on-one, -on -one, right? And then Jalen Hyatt's the beneficiary of those one-on-ones. He's faced press coverage about 67 times, I think was the number, where most other corner uh, receivers are over 200 in their career. So it's just things that you're going to see at the NFL level that you haven't seen in college, and it's, it, it does make for the projections really difficult.